This episode of Storytellers is brought to you by these fine companies. I'm Scotty Cannon. You're watching Drag Race and Storytellers at Competition Plus TV. Stowed on me one time by Hane Dominic. It was Hane. I asked for it and I got it. I'll never do that again in my life. We were in Epi, New Hampshire. First round, I'd made an intercooler. It wasn't you could run. There wasn't no rules so you couldn't run intercoolers. So I took some copper tubing. Run it through the top of my, run it all inside my injector, all in the top. All I could. Quarter inch tubing, and then exhausted it. And had a bottle in my car of CO2, but all I had here was nitrous bottles where I used to run nitrous. So I had them all filled with CO2. So I took the tube out of them, turned them upside down. So all the CO2 would come out. So to make that injector, an intercooler, you had to engage and send a tube like air conditioner. I know everybody's seen air conditioner ice up. So the first time I tested it was I was running Ronnie socks at a match race. And what I would do is I'd just flip a switch and when it, it would blow, you gotta understand it's a 30 pound bottle. And I only had like two or three of them. A big 30 pound bottle and it would exhaust when it come out, it would throw me how nitrous throws out. CO2 and nitrous has the same characteristics when it goes into the atmosphere. It has a big old fog. Here we are in Epi, New Hampshire. It's about 65 or 70 degrees. And I'd done run it and it worked. So the only way it would work was you had the timing had to be right. So I did my burnout. And we had tested it the race against Ronnie. And Ronnie told me, he said, they'll throw you so far out of the racetrack you'll never get to race again if you try to get by with this. And I said, well, it don't say nothing about intercoolers. Well, I got a phone call on Monday. Monday. Ron, and me and Ronnie was tired. He was like a hero to me. And he, and he said, you can't run no intercoolers. I said, well, what is an intercooler? Like the funny car body. He said, it, you can't have nothing with ice or a coolant in it. What's well, considered a coolant? Oh, yeah. Nobody couldn't answer that. So when I show up, naturally, my baker, everybody's on my car. All right, what's in the bottle? I said, well, I'm going to show you it don't go in the motor. It goes out. And I showed him every, I showed him exactly where, where, where the tube went in. It's one whole copper, one copper line. Where it went in, where it was just all wrapped all inside this whole big injector, and then where it come out. It's a cool wrench pipe. Now these big old fogs that you see come out of these regular nitrous cars are little eighth inch lines and they go high as a house. Well this 30 pound bottle, it went like high as a transfer truck. And <laughs> I, what I would do is when I started my burnout, I'd reach, we had levers in, I'd reach over and pull it high and I'd just flip the switch up and that's just turned the solenoid on and it started running the CO2, dumping that bottle through this inner, through these tubes and it's going over top of the car. The last edition of Drag Review is being brought to you from the home of Pro Mod Controversy, Scotty Cannon's on Sad Magazine Corvette Pit Area. Even though his fellow racers have kind of laid off of Scotty since the beginning of the season, they're back on his back with a vengeance here at the 1993 North American Nationals, where Cannon decided to debut a brand new intercooler on his supercharged big block Chevy engine. Now, intercoolers are no big deal in any other form of racing, especially on engines using turbochargers, but it's kind of unusual on a supercharged application. Cannon decided to inject CO2, carbon dioxide, underneath the fuel injector hat and above the supercharger to cool the air-fuel mixture going into the blower. It cooled it a bunch, down to 120 degrees below zero. But a lot of racers weren't quite so sure that that was CO2 that Scotty Cannon was using. They were afraid that it was nitrous oxide or something else. What I was basically doing was kind of telling everybody how, how it worked as an intercooler because you, you couldn't run an intercooler, and when I got there, you could run it. Well, because it's not an intercooler. Basically, all it does is just frost up these tubes inside the injector. Well, what it does, and then they, they sit there, and then they start making the car start run rough. 
because it's actually they start condensing like a condenser in a car or something and it starts blubbering and acting stupid and and then I have to give it a little bit of throttle and the more throttle you give it the more it wants to start acting stupid and it'll almost start sounding like it's got nitro in it because it's a skipping and a popping and a banging and a booming it and it's <laughs> and, and I'm already outrunning everybody I'm already my car's already faster and Ronnie was there too and like I said this match race in the week before and I'm backing up and boy so they all call him snuff dipper my, everybody called him my crew chief but he me and him working on the car together he just done the clutch and he was my man he was with me 10 years and never left he was with me in a funny car too he said I'll never forget it he said I don't know if they're going to let you make this run or not he said but you got an audience like you've never seen he said if you don't slow down back enough you're going to run over Scott Shafroff Gene Fulton Hayne Dominic uh I don't know. They submit, they won't even get out of the way. I said, make them move. And I just reached over. I just reached over and got another gear and made, so we'd back up even faster. They got on out of the way. So when I backed up, I backed up past the tree and stopped. And boys is hollering. They cussing. They mad. Boys said, look out your window. And I don't never forget. I looked at our Shafferall's head. He's looking in the car. I look, and the people went right at the front of my fenders. I'm getting ready to stage in my car. I'm like, what are they doing? He said, I don't know. And boy, and boys is pulling me up. They in his way, I promise you. They're in his way. And I'm like, he said, there ain't nobody saying nothing. Just... I said, I need to go. I said, it's starting to, it's, I said, it's starting to condense. I said, it's start, the intercooler ain't going to be no good. I got to go. I got to go. He said, get in there and go. And I put the first bub on whoever I was qualifying, and that joke got about a thousand foot and boom, throw the rods out of it, caught on fire. So make a long story short, I used it three runs, set the ET record with the blame thing, didn't keep the rods in it twelve hundred foot, and spent Saturday night all night putting this building one motor put back together. And we could hear the birds chirping promise you. And we cranked the car up. And you can't crank a car up there after night. We cranked the car up and cut it right back off. It's still on jack stand. We just, all the lights is off, went in the motorhome. And here comes the police riding by the security. So nobody says anything. No, you know, no harm, no foul. Pull in the staging lanes the next morning. Bottle set the trailer. Different injector on it. Bill Barrett sitting over there. What do you say? Boy, What's wrong with you? I said, if I ever get that baby to the other end, he said, you going to kill yourself? He said, that thing make that much difference? I said, you just don't know. I, he said, do you know how good the air is up here? I said, best i ever been in. He said, well, why are you trying something like that up here? You don't need it. I said, well, that's why I slept back at the trailer. He said, well, I'll tell you what. I said, look, I got a blank in the main. I turn the high speed around backwards. I'm going to run it on the main and just go home. He says, that might be a good idea before you get yourself hurt. I done used everybody's fire bottles, all the funny car fire, fire bottles. I bought all Von Smith's. Everybody had just one set. I done, they wasn't none. I get, maybe somebody else had some, but everybody I asked had some. They let me use them. We didn't care spare fire bottles for a pro mod car. They had them one, you know, that went for two. It's kind of Mickey Mouse, really. They ain't using nice ones now that really work. If we'd have bad fires back then, we'd have been in trouble. So I pulled the first stage and natural I was qualified good. <laughs> no mile higher. No. It doesn't throw rods out of all four of my motors. I ain't got a motor left, Daddy O. We done patched one up. Right down the racetrack. Both fins of the world record. <laughs> Boy says, he ain't gonna like this. He says, is the rod still in it? I said, I didn't rattle. him. He said, he ain't a puff of smoke nowhere. He said, I like two tenths quicker than anybody's ever been. Seven mile hour or some stuff stupid. He said, you in trouble, brother. You, you, you in some trouble. He said, they are raising cane on the starting line. So, 
I get back to the pits, and Baker didn't walk over and say, where's it at? And I said, where's what at? Why'd it run so good then it blow up? He said, you just blow them motors up? I, I, I don't know if it was Baker or if it was Haynes. He said, you, you just blew your motors up and you just go out there and you ain't hurt nothing and you run that fast? I said, no, I got my motors fixed and I just took that off because it's turned my motors up and I just figured it wouldn't run that fast and I just, I guess I stumbled up on something. So I won the race. Back, I set the record three times every time I run. So, I mean, I don't run that fast when I slow down. I need the money bad. I got four broke motors. I had to win. So we got done. I'll never forget it. We got on the scales. And my car was already about 30 heavy. And old Hank Dominic said, he said, I'll never forget to die. He said, how much do you think 50 pounds slow your car down? I don't know. I don't really care. Is you sure? And you know, Hayne was a real nice, polite guy. And I was happy I won. I had a bunch of toy up junk now. <laughs> and I said, I don't know why I get 50 pounds. He said, Yeah, please. I said, Won't you double it? He said, That's more like what I was thinking. And I said, You'd buy it to be stupid to put 100 pounds on me. I said, That's about, you know, that's unheard of. He said, no, you got a hundred. That's what you asked for. You're just what you're getting. I said, you got a kid, right? Do I look like I'm getting? <laughs> Hold on there. It gets better. And so we go into the first first run. I'm like, it shook me out of the car just about. I pedaled it, and I, I think I wound up qualifying like 14th or 15th or something, and I won't forget it. It's too, it's too, it, gets, it gets better and better. And then now everybody's laughing at me. Because everybody knows the story. Everybody's done heard it. Okay, now, you know, the tiger's been biting everybody. Now they got a tiger by the tail, and the tiger knows they do. Now the tiger's worried. I'm. Man, boy, boy says, You got a snail, Scotty. You know, your you smart mouth is just. You, you bit off more than you chew this time. I'm like, Man, I didn't, I, I didn't know what to do. I promise I did not know what to do. I just didn't know. I couldn't get it to run. But it wasn't running but about three or four mile an hour slower than when I set the record. It still runs speed. I laid there at night and I laid there and I kept thinking. I said, that thing's got to have power. That, that, my, that weight ain't hurting my car on speed. If anywhere, it should hurt it down there. And I just got to thinking common sense. I said, well, if it was a tractor, I'd put more gear in it. So I tried to find me the next Sunday morning. I'm up at 7 o'clock. I'm in every pro stop trailer I can find. They ain't no, and I had, back then I had a 71, I think, in my car. I'm looking for an 88 or a 500, anything. If I don't care what it was. Couldn't find nothing. I think it was, I'll tell you exactly what it was. Their daddy's own trucking company. Uh, Kurt. Kurt. They run a Linko. All the pro stops run the same one. They didn't run that light one back then. They run the heavy one. He said, I got some gear ratios. I said, well, that thing's running speed. I said, what you got? And I come up with a gear ratio, stupid. When me and Boyce built a transmission for first round, straight to number one again and set the record again and won the race at the President's Cup. Now, that's when things didn't go over real good. No tiger got his little feather put back up in. I was, I was ready to fly again then. But I'll tell you what I didn't do. I didn't open my mouth no more. And this ain't no lie. I might have lied because they say, how is that? It hurt itself again. We had the valve covers and the heads off of it, whether it was hurt or not. Hey, because I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want no more damn weight put on me. I could not stand it. I thought it put me out of business. They already had me up about 2,600 pounds. Get back, Jack. Here we go. So you're trying to tell me in a calm down, easy kind of sort of way that you can go a lot quicker. It's going in the 50s this time with the track can stand it because I'm going to let it rock. All you did was restrip that supercharger. <laughs> That's right. We put old Betsy back on. I've been telling them, get that old, you see how beat up the rotors was? I'll skin up and tore up. I've had a bad day now. If I can get down, I'm telling them, let's, 
Uh, do, puts off a 40 or something. I was going to say, don't forget, this next pair here could be the drag race of all time. Yeah, but I ain't a 10th behind no more. We can play ball, guys. <laughs>